In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the Monarch Social Sharing Fly-In Box. The Fly-In Box is a box of social media sharing buttons that will slide in or animate in from the bottom of your screen um, based on your own customizable triggers. For example, this is an example blog post with the Fly-In location enabled with the trigger set to bottom of the post, which means that as a visitor is reading your post, and they're engaged with the post and they read down to the very bottom of the post, they're going to get greeted with a little box that flies in and asks them to share the page on the social networks that you've selected. So let's see what that looks like. Here we go. I'm scrolling down. It reached the bottom of the post. And here this share this post um, fly-in box fades in. So to enable the fly-in, first you're going to want to navigate over to your Monarch Settings page under Tools, Monarch Settings. And the first page you're going to see here is your Manage Locations tab for social sharing. And in this case, we're going to want to enable the fly-in location. You're going to get the green check mark, which means that location is now enabled. And once it's enabled, you're going to go over to the fly-in um, tab here um, to find all the settings related to the fly-in box. We have a lot of stuff here, the icon style, shape. You can adjust the title and the message. Um, a bunch of display settings, color settings, and finally post type settings which control where that fly-in appears on your website. So let's play with a few of these just to see how things work. First up is the icon style. Um, that's basically the hover animation. So you can um, preview these animations right here in the dashboard. Just hover over them and see which style you think works best for your website. Um, right now I have this nice uh, flip animation but you can Make it a bit simpler here and just choose this basic um, darken animation. Next you have your icon shape. So um, in the preview I showed you a moment ago, I had the rounded rectangle selected. But you can choose a, uh, a normal rectangle or a circle. So let's try changing to circle and see what that looks like. I'm going to save and update our page so we can get a look at that. So here we go. Um, it's been changed to circle icons. And the animation is no longer that flip animation, it's just a simple um, darken on hover animation. Okay, going back to the settings, I'm going to switch back to my rounded rectangle. And next up, you can adjust the title and the message. So you can say whatever you like here. And if you don't want to have a message or title at all, you can just erase everything from the, from the box here and um, the message or title will be deleted. The title appears above, the message appears below. So let's refresh. See, I changed the title here and I removed the message. So yeah, you can adjust those as you see fit. Okay, next up are the display settings. The first is the location. So you can have the slide in either come in from the bottom right or the bottom left. And right now we have it on the right, but if we changed it to the left and refreshed, you see it come in over there. And change back that back to right. The icon alignment. This adjusts where the icon within the buttons is aligned, either to the left or to the center. So let's try changing it to center to see what that looks like. Now when you change to center alignment, it's going to make the button a lot bigger because it's, it's stacking the button and whatever text you have enabled, whether that be the network name or the share count. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing these settings that um, centering it is going to result in larger buttons, um, which may be better or worse depending on your website's design and uh, how many networks you have enabled. For example, if I only had four networks enabled, I would probably go with this style since it's a, a bit more noticeable, probably will result in more clicks. And it looks nice in this 2x2 two two grid to have these large buttons. Um, since I have eight networks enabled, I would probably prefer the left alignment option. So I'm going to change it back to that and save. And then you can see the difference here. It makes the buttons a bit smaller because it's stacking or um, putting everything in line. Next up, we have the number of columns. So as you can see now, we have a set of two columns, but you can change that. If you set it to one column, it would put everything in one row like this. Um, to the same effect, you can change it to three columns. 
Now keep in mind, the, the more columns you have, the less space there is for the content within the buttons, which means if you have an icon and a network name and the network name is long and you also have share counts enabled, um, it's going to get hard and harder to fit all of that content within smaller columns. So just keep that in mind that you can kind of play with these settings and adjust it um, accordingly if you only have an icon enabled, for example. So let's say I don't want to display network names. I'm kind of jumping ahead here just to showcase this. But if I were to untoggle the network names and use three columns, that might work quite nicely because all I'm using is all I'm showing is the icon, and in three columns um, that fits great. So like I said, just uh, play with those and choose whatever um, combination of options works for you. So I'm going to switch it back to two columns and re-enable those network names and continue on to the next setting here, which is intro animation. This affects the animation that's used once that pop-up um, flying is triggered. Right now we just have it faded in, fading, <laughs> fading in, but there are um, a bunch of great um, animations you can use here sliding up from the right or the bot or the bottom or the top or um, some, some uh, fun stuff like a, a swing or a bounce. Um, so you, you know just experiment with these and choose one that you like. Um, I'm gonna change it to let's see I'm gonna change it to flip which is a pretty cool effect for the flying I think. So let's get a look at that. Scrolling down there we go it flips in. So yeah, the certain animations might be more noticeable might um, grab your visitor's attention a little bit more. At the same time, you might find certain animations to be a little too aggressive um, for your website. It just depends on what you want to do. Next up, we have the, um, the, the three different triggers that can be used to trigger that fly-in. And you can use these together or just enable one of the three. And the three options are automatic pop-up, which will display the fly-in automatically no matter what based on a timing delay. The next is the page leave trigger which will trigger that fly-in as the visitor is leaving the page and going to click their back button. And the final one is one uh, I've been showing you which is trigger at the bottom of the post. So let me um, enable a different one just to give you an idea how, how those work. I'm going to try the automatic pop-up. Enable that. As you enable the automatic pop-up you're going to get a new option which is the delay that should be used um, before that pop-up is triggered. Uh, in this case, it's a fly-in, but before that fly-in is triggered. So right now it's 10 seconds. If I were to enable this with a 10 second delay, that fly-in is going to animate in after um, a visitor has been on the page for 10 seconds. So let's try that out. I'm actually going to reduce it to 5 seconds so we don't have to wait around too long. Refresh. So I'm just waiting here for a few seconds. And there we go. 5 seconds later, the fly-in flies in. Now you can adjust that. Um, personally, I think fi uh, five seconds is a bit too quick. You want to give your, you know, time for your visitor to, to be engaged in the page and not disrupt their reading. But you can you can play with that setting and, and decide what works best for you. Um, and as always, you know, check your stats, monitor your stats, see what's actually resulting in more shares. Um, um, the results might surprise you. So I'm going to disable this for now. The next one is a trigger on page leave, and this grabs your visitor's attention as they're leaving the page. So say someone came in through Google, they land on your blog post, and that's all I did. They, they, read, they read this one blog post, or maybe they didn't even finish reading it, and they're going to bounce away, and you're going to lose them forever, and that's not what you want. You want to try to, to re-engage that, that bouncing visitor. So he, lands on, he or she lands on the page, their mouse is about to go to the back button and leave, and there you go, you get the pop-up to, to grab their attention one last time before they leave whether that visitor was engaged or not. Maybe they read your post and they're about to leave without sharing it. Why don't you remind them, hey, why don't you share our post if you liked it before you leave our website? So that's the page leave trigger. And um, you're free to, as well, enable all of these at once. Um, the way we have it set up, even if you enable all three triggers, only one of them will actually, actually execute. The first one to trigger will trigger the fly-in, and the fly-in will only be triggered at maximum one time per page. So you can enable all of these and it actually won't be as quite as overwhelming as you think. And you can also um, kind of play with these triggers in combination with your pop-up to get good results. The pop-up has the same exact triggers, so you probably don't want to have the same exact triggers enabled for your pop-up and your fly-in, 
but you might, might want to have a combination of the two. For example, I think having the bottom of the post trigger for the fly-in in combination with the page leave trigger for the pop-up would be quite good. You get the fly-in coming in as, you, as your engaged visitors are reaching the bottom of the post, and you also capture those bouncing visitors who might not be in so engaged with the pop-up. Now the display once per session, um, you can enable that, which will limit the fly-in to only be displayed once uh, maximum um, per visitor session, no matter how many pages they visit. By default, they're going to get that fly-in on every single page in which it is enabled. But if you think that's a little bit too aggressive, you don't want to annoy your visitors too much, you can enable this, and they will only see a pop-up uh, or fly-in one time based on the session duration, which is in days, and you can adjust that. So let's say you want your visitors only to see the fly-in once per week. At maximum, you can set that to seven days, and that's what that will do. Um, display share counts, that will display share counts next to the icon, which will <coughs> tell your visitors how many times a post has been uh, shared on any given social network. And you can also adjust the minimum count display for um, that count, which will act as a threshold and will not display the count until that threshold is met. So for example, if you only want to display counts um, when a post has been shared more than 30 times, then you can set just th this to 30. And um, in the hypothetical situation that your post has been shared 30 times on Facebook, but zero times everywhere else, you only get that 30 share count, and you won't see a bunch of zeros, which I think um, could be better for you if you have a new blog, and you don't want to you know, show everyone how little your posts are being shared in the beginning. You might want to have a threshold um, set to counts. So let's just enable counts so I can show you what that looks like first. There you go. You can see the zero has been added there. OK. We're moving icon spacing. This will simply remove the spacing um, in between and around the different buttons here. You can see there's a bit of padding all along here if you want to remove that. It's a simply a, um, a design choice that you can make, and it will take away that spacing and make it turn into like a big, to a big block of buttons, which um, is a pretty cool effect. And if you like that, you're welcome to turn on that setting. All right, the final setting here in our display settings is the hide on mobile devices setting. This will disable the fly-in on mobile devices, such as phones, which um, can be useful if you have a bunch of different um, locations enabled, such as the pop-up and the fly-in and the social sidebar. Due to the way that the social sidebar breaks down on mobile, um, it's actually uh, the social sidebar is quite visible, um, no matter where you, are, where you are on the page. And since you have a, a limited space on the phone, it might be a good idea to just keep the social sidebar enabled on uh, mobile, but disable the pop-up and the fly-in since once they break down, they actually work pretty similarly. But again, that's up to you. So if you'd like to disable the fly-in on mobile, um, select this option. Finally, our color settings. By default, all of the networks will have the, the standard colors from the network itself uh, set for the background color of the button. Facebook will be a dark blue, Twitter will be a light blue, Google Plus will be a red, and so on. If you'd like to customize that, if you don't like that rainbow effect, you want to give uh, something that's um, closer to the design of your website, something that you know uh, mixes with it a bit better, you can customize those colors, uh, the background color, the hover background color, as well as the icon and, and icon hover color. So let's just change this really quick, and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to change the background color to red and the hover color to orange. Refresh and save that. And that's what you get there. Um, finally, is your post type settings. This will um, allow you to disable or enable the fly-in based on um, the different post types on your website. So by default, WordPress has two post types, posts and pages. If you would like your fly-in to only be displayed on posts but not displayed on pages, then you would enable it on posts and disable it on pages, which is a pretty common choice since um, these fly-ins and shares are op often used on blog posts but not necessarily like on your home page or your about page. But it's up to you and the type of content you have. And if you have additional post types um, registered with your um, WordPress installation, whether it be through a theme or a plugin, for example, I'm using Divi um, theme on this installation, which registers a product or project post type, um, then those are going to show up here and you can toggle those as well. If, for example, you had WooCommerce enabled and you had the product post type, that would show up here as well and you can enable or disable the fly in 
on those post types. So one last setting here that I skipped over is the um, display total shares option. So this will, if you have um, display counts enabled, these will, this will tally up all the shares from all the different networks you have enabled and create a total tally and it'll place it above your, um, your sharing buttons. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Here we go, see so the total shares here. In this case, I don't have any shares on my page, so the total is actually zero. But if you had um, shares on various networks, that would add up to a, a count um, that equaled the sum of all the shares. And you can also enable the, the text color of that total share to light or dark. If you've customized the background color of um, <coughs> the flying uh, box, then you can um, change this color to light or dark. And that's a basic overview of the flying box for Monarch.